Hello and welcome to The Aid Station. I'm Chris Robb and today really looking forward to our conversation as we head to Stockholm in Sweden to meet Stefan Movin, who's the president of the Swedish Mass Participation and Sports Event Association, doing so much great work in our industry there. Hey, Stefan, great to see you. Hi, Chris. Nice to be here. Yeah, really, you know, amazing story. We, we first only met a couple of weeks ago when, when you were part of the World Athletics webinar and, and then we had a follow-up conversation and there's so many amazing things that you're involved with. with. You wear multiple hats in, in, in mm -hmm. Sweden um, and your mass participation industry there is quite amazing. Lots of things that I wasn't aware of, but why don't we start by just getting a little bit of your background for the viewers, please? Yeah, I, I was the president of uh, the, before I, this this organization, the Swedish Mass Participation Event, uh, this organization, the Swedish Mass Participation uh, Association, is a new one. It, it was founded during the COVID. Prior to that, I was uh, president of the TCS Leading Loppet, which is the world's largest mass participation event when it comes to cross country with 40,000 runners. I'm also president of a, a combination of event with skiing, biking, running, as well as open water swimming that annually gather around 200,000 events with, for example, the iconic Vasalopoli cross-country skiing that uh, where we build and trying to can, uh, canalize mass participation to all these four different disciplines. And that is my background. So I, that was, uh, I've been that, doing that for more than 10 years. And then when the COVID hit Sweden, we recognized that we needed to expand the scope of those that co cooperated together in order to tackle all the difficult issues that comes together with COVID. So that's when we started the association that also have triathlon and having the other marathons and um, half marathons throughout Sweden. So in fact, we, we broaden the scope and we become a stronger voice in the public by that way, in that way. And, and it's, you know, it's a great example. There's so many things that you've achieved. You know, we are speaking about, uh, you know, insurance, the government coming on board to support uh, in terms of event cancellation insurance and, and, and other things. And in terms of this collaboration, I've seen lots of these different alliances happening around the world, but the one in Sweden seems to be really broad. It's not just mass participation events. You've brought other, other sports in. And what was that, was that pretty easy to do? You found that people, because your structure is also quite different. You have a really big club structure there as opposed to so much private enterprise so you know there's often around clubs that i've seen around the world there's often quite a lot of politics and and, and the like how, how was that was that relatively straightforward to bring such a group together and get that collaboration happening it, it's a lot about people as well you you cannot forget that because uh, uh, me as a person I, i've been actively engaged in in mass participation for for almost 15 years and I know all the people in the business because even if we don't have 10 million people the industry in mass participation is not that big and then being president of of a multi-discipline uh, association with skiing cross uh, running and so forth that brings uh, that makes it easy to get contact with them and all I'm also engaged in the Swedish um, athletics so I, I'm also engaged within the track and field part. So I, knowing a lot of people makes it also easier to get together. But from the, in the beginning, the demand to get things done was so great that it was very easy to get people together and start working together. Because what's really been interesting is the enthusiasm and this uh, within the group that need to get things done. And then when we start seeing results and we're seeing how much better we can work together in order to, to move forward, then it, all, then it becomes a spin wheel that we, all, that we always try, to, that we try to push in order to get it better and better, get it more effectively working. Because I, I read the first comments of the first, um, uh, from the first meetings, and you can see how the ideas and the group have come together while we're working together and seeing also what we need to be accomplished on the way to uh, in order to better, get a better position for our industry. Yeah, that's it's, it's a great story. And, and around that, I mean, I think people are really interested 
uh, you know, all over the world as to, you know, what's happening in each country. Sweden obviously has stood out in terms of, you know, no lockdowns and so on. So has that meant during that period of time that there's been quite a lot of events that have been happening? And if they have, what sort of size events have you been happening? And what's the, what's the situation like there now at the moment? The situation right now is that we are allowed to have eight people gathering in stadiums or in mass participation events. So in, in fact, it's a lockdown. Right. Even though, since it's not completely locked down, the government will not, uh, some of the laws will not be enforced, which means that we're still struggling to get some of the, uh, of the regulation on our side. But due to the eight people, then we need to, to, to work on that as well. But uh, what we have managed, though, is that we have, ma since a lot of Sweden is quite fortunate, since we have a lot of events going on land where we can discuss with private landowners instead of the roads and the cities. That means that we have been able, in fact, to use private areas that we can uh, control all the people within. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, we have had, um, uh, we have in, in more, uh, we have had two, I would say, two big events that we've been able to. Uh, been taking place during this pandemic. There's been one motorcycle race with uh, 8,000 people, uh, on, but that was an, in the military field, so we can keep that in track. And it was also the iconic um, Vasa Loppet that was able to be spread out during six weekends or, or five, five weekends. Uh, with slot times for, for the start. So in fact, but that could be, that was achievable since we could, it was no roads to close. We can use the arena throughout without getting more people, without increasing the density between people. So that may, may but it was, of course, all the volunteers made it heroic effort to be able to stand there waiting for each participant to enter and come through uh, or participate in the, for all the water and, and so forth. Well, and how many total participants were involved in that over that, that number? Of uh, weeks? During the uh, five weeks, I th uh, we came up to 16,000. Wow. Wow. And so what, what, what were some of the, you know, people always interested in the challenges? I mean, there's obviously been challenges for different in different ways all over the world. Some people have had the challenges of the lockdown and being working mm -hmm. from home and, you know, having young kids in some instances and so mm -hmm. on. You're just looking at those beautiful pictures on the wall before that you were telling about talking about young kids saying that, you know, your father was a royal photographer. And those are those are pictures of, of, of the king, king and, and queen if I'm right there on the wall behind you. Yeah. Yeah. King and his sister. King and his in, sister. Yeah. Right. No, 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 but, but the difficulty, and, and here's what I think we are not, it must, the mass participation event industry is not alone. We're, we're in this together with all other industries at the same time. We must recognize that sometimes uh, what are, is our position in the system? Yeah. And that means that uh, sometimes other areas within the society get the possibility to open up a little bit more better in other ways and then we must make sure that we get our stake in, in and that we're not put behind but the most important part where i think right now where sweden is right now is in fact sorry planning for the future because what we're seeing right now is that we see in a tourist industry that is really going on this needs that need agreed to be rebuilt we see in also health difficulties to a great extent throughout the uh, society where people have been sitting in lockdown with mental health as well as, as falling behind physically. And this is what I see. And from our industry, what we see in Sweden, this is great opportunities because we are, should be part of the rebuilt, the rebuilding the society afterwards. And what we are really doing, try, doing try, right now is seeing how can we position ourselves together with important stakeholders in order to take a position for the future. Because right now, what we cannot forget is that the whole society is falling behind. Yeah. And either we take a position that is stronger than it was previously, or we're going back to business as, as it was, and that will be uh, very little. Uh, then, then we will struggle with the same difficulties that we had before. In fact, I would see this pandemic right now, when it's starting to open up, as a great opportunity.
Yeah, I think, I mean, we're definitely on the same page. We had a great discussion and just over a week ago, didn't we, of this, you know, mm -hmm. the industry moving from this surviving to thriving focus, this victim mm -hmm. to opportunity focus. And, 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 you know, I think we're on exactly the same page, totally mm -hmm. aligned that, you know, we, for, for too long, the industry hasn't sold these amazing benefits from a health and well-being yeah. perspective that we do. And I think, you know, uh, it's probably globally recognized that many of the Scandinavian countries, including Sweden, are very forward thinking in that. So it's wonderful mm -hmm. to see those things starting to happen. And, and, and I, I totally agree with you. It's, I think we're going to look back on this and say, you know, this industry is going to it's going to have a different form for sure. There's going to be changes to mm -hmm. it. There had to be changes to our business models and so on. But we have a massive role to play in society. And I think it's, it's, it's really, really exciting for those that choose to to embrace it and you know what what you've been part of is, is collaboration is going to be key yeah. and i'm interested to hear you know from a leadership perspective you know we're starting to see you know many new leaders stand up in our industry we've had many amazing leaders that kind of laid the mm -hmm. foundation and you know in some ways we're seeing a you know a passing of the baton we're seeing new people emerge but you know some of your leadership principles how you found being able to lead this alliance have there been you you spoke about people which is you know we're definitely mm. in a people industry and it's key but any any insights that you'd like to share any tips any principles with the viewers around leadership and, and what's helped you to get this you know in your career generally and and what you've done with the with the association i i think there is is a principle that i found even get more important during this pandemic. And that is if you, if you help others, others will help you. So I think very much uh, what, what, and that's quite interesting when we, when I reached out and I guess that's the same for you, Chris, when, when you're talking to leaders throughout the, the world, those that are giving will also receive better, more back. And, to be honest, what I think what been part of the success in Sweden is that we have been providing a lot of things to other industries, stakeholders, and they are giving us, us uh, things back. Because, it, because there are a lot of stakeholders right now that are moving in order to reopen in different ways. But having the mass participation with health benefits that mass participation contributes, this and, and uh, also the brands that we represent in Sweden, that's untouchable because there are so many good values for them. So if you're taking the, uh, the, the music festival industry or if you're taking soccer stadiums, they want to be part of the greatness of the values that uh, mass participation brands contribute to. That's, so they are very eager to be part of us as long as we can give something. But we must take action deliver then we'll get a lot of things back and all not in the and it's important not start and think what will you get back start start delivering and then you will get things back and drive to what you think is important because then people will come come together and and support you and help you with with the similar outcomes because i think that is that's in fact the key and that's what we're trying to to impose and then it's also a lot easier to collaborate you're not always thinking about your own stake. You're thinking about the movement and how how you can help others because then you will also get the bandwagon moving. I think that's a wonderful insight. And, and you know, I guess even from that perspective, you know, in many parts of the world, we see people saying, "Well, what's government doing for us?" And and if we were to turn that on its head and say, you know, to that narrative, what can we do for governments? We can yeah. bring these health and and social benefits and all those. And and I'd love to get some insights for you know how how have you engaged with the government and and you know what have been the outcomes of you know apart from that amazing success that you had in terms of the insurance um, mm -hmm. and, and supporting the industry. Uh, you know, I, I keep saying that I see much of this victim mentality around the world. Our industry is going broke. You need to support us. And as you rightly point out, tourism is going down. Hospitality is going down. There's health issues. Schools are being closed. So, you know, governments can only support a certain number of industries and yeah. they need to make those decisions. And, and, and I think the onus is on, is on us to completely change that narrative. Was that part of how that engagement came with you you changing that narrative in, in, in terms of the health and well-being benefits and, and them then recognizing? that yeah it, it, it was and and also you you cannot forget that when you start looking at who to influence because th this is lobbying game when you're coming to the government 
And then you must recognize who, who are you influencing? Who are your, um, uh, who are the people that could, can go and take the lead for, for your sake within the industry? And then you recognize that there is a lot of people participating in our events. And in fact, they started to take in position before we did in some areas. So we started using them as the endorsers. And then, of course, uh, having our, our industry being important for locally for different... Uh, then we have the local politicians that could take a, a business narrative for their, uh, for the, their district or the, for their region for our, our, uh, our cause. But then you can also see that uh, if we're taking, for example, this insurance thing, we, we saw that... In fact, it's the conservative and the left that is cooperating together in order to bring that forward. And the conservative, they were very much into our as mass participation events. But the left in this case was more favorable for cultural events and had much stronger relationship with, with the culture festivals. Mm -hmm. And then bringing, then it was, of course, but we have the same aim. So bringing together and working together with uh, the culture industry and, and event industry within, the, uh, within culture was beneficial for us in order to reach our goal. Mm -hmm. And that's because you need to understand what kind of issues are up on the table and how can you, we bring them forward. And that's where, what's it's so interesting with the alliances and seeing who should we cooperate in, in, on what each issues. And, but also st standing firm for what you believe in because then you, People know who you are and what you what you drive for. Yeah, great point. The standing standing for what you believe in. Uh, we we could talk for hours. Time flies. I, I I always like to end on on an inspirational story. I'm sure you've seen much of inspiration. You've inspired so many people. But is there a particular story that you might like to leave the viewers with, please, Stefan? There, there's a lot of inspiration, but it, but it all comes down to are the single persons that are in fact driving and changing the business. And it could be from athletes that are performing. We talked previously about uh, Greta Weitz, that is, of course is an iconic when it comes to inspiration, when it comes to running. But you have the same people on the organizational side, people that are taking the stand and driving and building businesses or, or uh, ideas around an event. And we, it's, of course, it's always interesting to go back to, to the London marathons. And in Sweden, we have the Vasa Loppere and we have uh, those that started different things 50 years ago. But what's interesting now is that we started popping up but it, it, with ideas and persons that are trying to strive for new ideas in the future. And a lot of digital solutions coming up. And, and what's really inspiring right now is that is it's tickling it's uh, bubbling it's happening a lot of things around us and i think that's what it's right right now inspiring me to see where will this industry go and what will be next because we cannot look backwards and saying let's start another race because that's not the future the future is to see where what should we hang on to and who should we cooperate with and what will tomorrow brings and that is that's challenging and that's expiring and that's what I'm looking forward to. It's, it's a wonderful way to end. And, and I couldn't agree with you more. This massive transformation, young, digital savvy, tech savvy people coming into our, our industry that we can embrace and show us a different way with hopefully still hanging on to so many of the amazing people that have contributed so much to people's lives as in the foundation of this mm -hmm. industry. We've got a great foundation to build on. So, yeah. yeah. Really wonderful. Thank you so much for your time, Stefan. As I say, we could have we could have spoken for an hour, but some really great insights there. Really appreciate you making the time and uh, and look forward to staying in contact as we go forward. Thank you for be, for having me, Chris. And I always en enjoy talking to you as well. Hopefully, it's in person soon. Look forward to that day. Absolutely. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Stefan. Bye.